So this was a look at 50,000 runners. I mean, 50,000 people followed for decades, on average 15 years, but up to 30 years. And what they found was that runners lived longer, 19% longer, but if we look closer, you'll see that the runners, compared to the non-runners here, the risk of death, if you ran more than 25 miles per week, your benefits went away. You only got this 25 to 27% reduction in mortality if you ran between, say, five and 20 miles a week, ideally 10 to 15 miles a week. And when we looked at the running speed, sure enough, if you ran too fast over eight miles an hour, which is a 730 pace, the benefits went away. Now, they weren't worse than the non-runners, but heck, if you're running that much, you'd think you'd get some health benefits. No, you have to back off to a six or seven mile an hour pace, which is about a 10 minute mile an hour jog, okay? And interestingly, how many days a week? Seven days a week if you're running, the benefits go away. You need to run fewer days, two to five ideally. So another study, the Copenhagen City Heart Study, compared non-runners to runners, and they found the same thing. The relationship appears much like alcohol. Mortality is lower in people reporting moderate jogging than in non-joggers or those undertaking extreme exercise. The moderate joggers got a 44% reduction in mortality. They lived six years longer, but it went away if you overdid it. The truth is that exercise does confer powerful benefits, and the belief is more is, the, is better, but we're learning that more is not better in this case. Anyway, we're not meant to run. We're not born to run. We're born to walk, okay? We need to be walking more today. We need to be strolling. We need to be moving your body rather than sitting. Every chance you get, move and do some high intensity interval training from time to time. But personally, I've found that, that, that what I do now is I've shortened my runs up. I go, when I run, I run a half, uh, I run a one and a half to at the most three miles, typically about two miles. I take the pace down. I walk with my wife. I play with my kids. I stop in meadows or parks and do some yoga. When I'm swimming, rather than churning away, I get on my back and I do some nice, gentle backstrokes. And I watch the clouds sail overhead and see the birds soaring in the sky. And I can feel my heart relaxing and healing and getting better, okay? So all things in moderation is not a new concept. The father of medicine said 2,500 years ago, the right amount of nourishment and exercise, not too much, not too little, is the safest way to health, okay? so. I've never presented in my 30 years as a cardiologist such controversial data. But the truth is, this is a U-shaped curve, okay? And the couch potatoes are using this as an excuse to continue their sedentary behavior. And then there's the whole extreme exercisers, people like me, who don't want to hear this message. In fact, they kind of want to kill the messenger. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of sort of adverse comments about this research. but. You know, what I've decided is that you need to snuggle in to the safety of the middle of the U-curve when it comes to exercise or when it comes to anything else in life. And to me, I've decided that running too fast and too hard is only going to speed my progress towards the finish line in my life. So I decided to back it off and hopefully enjoy more sunrises and sunsets. Thank you. Thank you.